Hey up and uh, good morning and welcome to the woodland and uh, as you can see I've just had a walk through trying to pick off compositions using the uh, the morning light and uh, I love to do that I love to go into the woodland first thing in the morning and just see what the light produces for us uh, as it dances around the trees I start off on the edge of the woodland because when the sun's low it just illuminates the edge of the woodland and uh, as the sun rises I move further in because that's what the light does it tends to go further into the woodland so we're gonna have a chat about tripods oh yes tripods now I tend to have two tripods a main tripod and a travel tripod and uh, my main tripod is currently Benro uh, and that is pretty good it's rock steady uh, along with the Benro ball head as well. Now when I say it's rock steady it's uh, also rock heavy so when I'm marching around or when I'm hiking around it's like carrying a bag of rocks so it does have a downside. Now over the years I was thinking the other day over the last 15 years I've had 15 travel tripods various price points so anywhere from 85 pound up to 180 and I've tried probably all the major brands amongst those tripods and for whatever reason they've not lasted they've just not lasted at all and there's always been something wrong with them either the legs failed the legs have dropped off the twisty bits broke one of the knobs that I've turned has broken off the ball heads fallen off so they've just not been up to the job and it's quite frustrating because it's a lot of money that uh, I've spent on on tripods morning so this tripod I bought last year uh, Manfrotto and it's uh, it's probably been one of the better ones if I'm honest although there is a, a few things that are starting to deteriorate with it one for example is the um, the plastic bit underneath where you hold the bag is only good enough to hold a handbag really you, you cannot get you cannot get a camera bag under there number two the legs are starting to seize up and jam so when I'm doing this I'll come to one leg like that that's starting to get stiff and you think why why is that happening so oh got a leaf so but the most annoying thing about this tripod is these catchers here and these allow the when you adjust these these allow the legs to move in and out like this and what i find is that these move okay very annoyingly when you're setting the tripod up and moving it round, they move and all of a sudden you're setting up your camera and the leg moves out like that and once one moves they all want to move so whilst this has been one of the better tripods very sturdy and quite light uh, I've replaced it with another one and I need to swap the tripods over because you're sitting on the new one at the moment okay and here it is it's a small rig uh, brand and it's very light it's carbon fiber and it's super compact just look how compact that is and the only thing with light tripods and super compact tripods is the stability how stable are they going to be but just look at the difference there that is going to be much easier to hang my camera bag on than the other one and unfolds very easy snaps into place no waggly legs there nice and solid and rather than twisty grips we've got these clips that just come straight out so you can lock them in so it does seem easy to use it was uh, I did get a voucher offer on Amazon I think I paid about 120 pound for it it was 137 originally but at the moment this appears to be nice and solid now the center column starts 
down there. Okay, then goes to there. And that height is okay. That is the perfect height. You want it a little higher, and we go to this height. And at this height, what you're going to get is wobbleability. Yeah, wobbleability. I mean, the ground here is soft, and I'm going to put the camera on in a minute, and we'll look at the wobbleability. Manufacturers tend to tell you the weight that the tripod can take, and this tripod can take uh, much more than my, my D850 with the 100 to 400 lens on. Uh, but what they don't tell you is the wobbleability, and that's what you've got to look at when you start taking images. So uh, let's get the camera on and let me show you the wobbleability. Morning. Okay, now we have big wobbleability. We're at the highest point, the tripod can go. There's a little bit of wind blowing in the woodland, although we're in a sheltered area. But even without touching the camera at the moment, I can see there's wobbleability. And when I start touching it, <laughs> that wobbleability factor really increases. So at this height, now, I don't envisage needing this height when I've got the telephoto uh, zoom on, to be honest. I'm probably going to be lower down. So I'm going to pick a shutter speed that's going to stop wobbleability. For this, I've set five second timer, auto ISO, and uh, one eight hundredth of a second. And what I'm going to do, rather than pressing the shutter, I'm going to tap the screen. And at one eight hundredth of a second, that has froze the wobbleability on that shot. However, I think it's more stable for me to press the, manually press the shutter rather than tapping the screen. Maybe not. So one eight hundredth of a second at that height is giving me uh, a sharp image. Okay, so anything further down like this, or if we go even lower, is definitely going to give me a sharper image. So this is tripod number 16 that we're going to use. Let's see how we get on with this. And when you think in today's technology, 2024, why can't, right, some it falling down. In 2024, why can't manufacturers manufacture, for us photographers, the perfect tripod? Why have we not got the perfect tripod? <sighs> Comments below, please. Right, let's go and find some compositions uh, in this woodland. Well, we've got some nice light above us. Uh, I think the rant's over on tripods, but what, what's your experience of tripods? Do they not last long? Do I need to spend a lot more money? That's the question. Do I really need to crash out as much as I crashed out on my Benro tripod on a travel tripod? I don't know. Anyway, this, I'm hoping, uh, this time next year, I'm hoping that I don't have to introduce yet another tripod. Let's go and get some, uh, let's go and get some more compositions. Okay, we're a bit more exposed here, so there might be a gust of wind in a minute. But I've got this view, looking down the, uh, the woodland, it's woodland road actually. Uh, and I've just been told part of it's been resurfaced because lorries are coming in and they're going to start taking down some of the trees. <coughs> but this is quite a nice view and I don't know what the trees are, but on the right hand side they look like silver birch. And at the top they look like they've got some pink on them. I don't think it's pink, but when the sun catches it, it looks pink. And then you've got the, then you've got the view continuing down the road and it goes into darkness down there. Then we've got a bit of light on the left-hand side and then the tall pine trees, they're being uh, illuminated as well. So it does make for a very nice scene. I'm just uh, keeping an eye on the light here because it does keep changing. And uh, we will have some sky in the shot, unfortunately. Let's just put the video up. Let's get a video view of this. So I'm going to try and crop out most of the sky where I can. 
uh, and just really feature on the scene and the trees and it's nice it's a nice pleasant view of uh, of this woodland and the woodland's very busy this morning yeah there's at least 20 dogs past me and their owners walking them um, but yeah nice this let's go and find another I took a similar shot to this uh, a few weeks ago uh, and there was a puddle reflection and I put the shot on uh, Instagram but I love the the verticals in the trees here and they are wobbling a bit because the, the wind is uh, yeah it's raging above us but uh, I just love the verticals in the trees there's some really nice light on them as well and I've gone in at 70 mil so we've compressed the uh, line of trees and the avenue of trees just to give us a nice shot here's the video of the composition so we do unfortunately have this tree branch in the shot so I'm going to move forward a little and a little to my left here let's try and get the tripod yeah just pull back a little yeah I like that and what I like is we've got like a strip of um, green foliage dividing the image in the upper part let's uh, let's take the shot yeah like that 100th, one one hundredth of a second uh, f11 ISO 500 I might do a horizontal as well why not and include this tree on the right this small tree let's uh, see how that looks okay so let's uh, let's go and find a macro uh, shot I still want, I want to end the video on a uh, on a macro shot so uh, let's we need to be careful where we set up camp because these trees are moving like this and uh, we don't want to get injured do we? I want to get home in one piece okay uh, I've decided to call it a day on this video the wind was supposed to die down uh, towards dinner time but it's doing the opposite and there's a couple of trees already come down this morning so it's not exactly the safest place to be in a woodland where the trees are bending so uh, yes we'll call it a day we didn't get the macro shot what I'll do I'll do a full macro video uh, in spring and we'll get the uh, the camera on the tripod in bat mode upside down so how's this tripod done this morning it's actually done pretty well I think I'm quite happy with it it's very light to carry it's sturdy enough to hold the 100 to 400 on the uh, Nikon D850 and uh, quick to set up quick to shut down so far so good but time matters with equipment you've got to give equipment time to settle in and and use it uh, but not abuse it so very happy with it so far I'm looking forward to taking it uh, up into the Lake District in a couple of weeks time and that could be the next video or it could be a collaboration with Eddie Skelton we're overdue for one now uh, Mr. Scouts and we need to get our act together. The weather's not helped to be honest so uh, let's hope we're going to get some settled weather. Now in the Lake District I'm going to get uh, Helen involved in some of the uh, filming so yeah that should be interesting I'm going to give her some training on the gimbal before we go so uh, yeah wish me luck with that one. We'll see some alternative uh, b-roll I'm pretty sure. So uh, I did take some uh, lichen so we'll end the video on these lichen shots that I took and I was going to get the macro lens out but I thought well, I don't really need to 
that the 24 to 70 is going to cope with this. So um, we'll end with these shots of the lichen. Like and subscribe if you like this content. Pop a comment in the bottom. Have you got a really good travel tripod that you're happy with? I'd love to know because I'm more than likely going to listen to another photographer than somebody doing a tripod review. And on that note, I'll see you later on the next one. Like and shots. Ooh, like and subscribe as well. Oh, that was cheeky. Thank you.